Good morning, good morning, good morning, you lovely lot. It is about half ten. I have been lazy. Um, I am still in bed, but I'm not, I've not been asleep till half ten. I was asleep till half nine. The alarm went off at seven, Lee went to work and I went back to sleep. But um, I think I needed it because obviously I woke up at six yesterday and went to bed at something like one in the morning and I never sleep particularly well when I travel one night. Oh, excuse me. Anyway, today I thought, now I've got the van back, I would still like to be out exploring, which I haven't been able to do for a long time. And obviously I don't work Monday. So I thought I would go and have a wander around Beaconsfield because what I would like to do is do a separate bunch of videos, um, much like the Ely video yesterday, but sort of more like that with less of the vlog bits on um that's just on places where you could go and visit and try and add some bits in for fab park ups if possible if there is anywhere locally um just because i think it'll be helpful to find places to visit and places to park and a bit of history about places so i'm gonna head to beaconsfield today which is the birthplace of noddy the noddy books um, it is where Enid Blyton wrote lots of her stories. It is also uh, a very old, I think it boasts the, the oldest free house pub in the UK. And it has the first model village in the world. So, um... Yeah, I think there'll be lots of things for us to go and have a little look at. So I'm going to get out of my pit, get dressed, and we'll head off there. I'll do some bits in the vlog, and then I'll do a separate video just for van people who might be interested in just that bit. So there might be two videos going up today. Some of it will be the same. I'm hitting the road. It's not a very far trip from home. I thought I would do some of the places that are close to home as little... Uh, Travel guides. Travel guides, is that the right, right word? I don't know, we'll see. Um, I'm having a bit of a struggle, so I've completely broken my camper van toilet. Uh, so the blade that was not quite in at the right angle, I pulled the handle to open it and the handle came off, which meant the blade fell in. Now, everything is in working order. None of it is broken as such. But because of the seal that seals the unit together, uh, I can't get into the actual box to fit it, which is frustrating. I need to actually be able to take it apart. I mean, it's broken anyway, so I could force it. I have been looking to buy a new one. They're about 60 pounds. They're nearly 80 in Argos, but Argos don't have any near me. Um, they don't have them for delivery. I've looked on a couple of campsites and they don't have them either. And it needs to be that particular type because it can't be tall. It has to be the same height or shorter but they don't have it in stock in most places. So does that mean it's an old style? I mean, this style has been around forever, so why they would suddenly decide not to do it anymore, I don't know. Or is it because everybody's now gonna go camping this year? They all want staycations? Who knows? So you can't get hold of them. I'm finding it increasingly more difficult to get a hold of them. But I thought I'm not gonna sit at home, it's already 11 o'clock, I'm not gonna sit at home wasting my day looking for a toilet. So what I've decided to do is hit the road and then at some point, I'm sure I will stop for a cup of tea, mid travels, probably while I'm in Beaconsfield, it would be nice to find a quiet place that has a good setup for having a cup of tea somewhere, support a business. Um, typically I have for 
forgotten my mask. It was in my jacket pocket, which I didn't bring with me. But hopefully it'll be quiet and I won't need it. Or maybe I'll even be able to buy a nice one there. Who knows? I'm sure places will be selling them more readily now, seeing as they are everyday use. We'll find out. Right, time to hit the motorway. Whee, I'm on the motorway. Got very close. Very close to being on the motorway. Okay, here we go. So, yeah, I just, for me, it's literally straight up the M40. Beaconsfield is off the M40 um, up towards London End. Um, it's in Buckinghamshire. And, yeah, I told you a little bit about it. Enid Blyton was there. Um, there was a sundial, which was apparently in her garden, but that is now in the model village. Um, somebody rescued it. One of the guys who was doing something to do with the demolition uh, rescued the sundial from demolishing and then he was going to put it up for auction and decided to offer it to the model village in Beaconsfield and they took it on. So it stayed in the local area which is really good but there is a little plaque um, which we need to go find. Um, Enid Blyton wrote some amazing kids books. I grew up on her um, Secret Seven and Famous Five books. She did things like The Faraway Tree. She did obviously the Noddy books. I think in the 60s, her popularity was blighted by, which is quite appropriate at the moment, by her sort of racist and sexist views. Um, I'm not going to say she was racist, sexist. I think she grew up in a time where certain opinions were deemed as the norm and were not challenged. Um, I'm not saying it's right, but I'm saying that's how it was. It was learnt behaviour through families and the opinions of your elders and it was just seen as normal. Um, and so she wrote a lot of stories that reflect the era. So she had Gollywogs, uh, which was a toy. I mean, I've got Gollywog in the loft, which was a toy that was readily available when you were growing, when, you know, back in the 70s and 80s, for, for certain, and obviously earlier than that. Um, and was actually, a Gollywog was actually the sign of, uh, was the little, on the Robinson's Jam. I mean, I remember my mum used to send off the labels and collect little badges. He was their mascot, I think, um, back in the day. So obviously, I mean, I never looked at a gollywog as representing a black person. That never, um, never crossed my mind. I just thought it was another toy. Um, and it was only when it was pointed out to me as an adult that that's what it was that I realised why it would be seen as derogatory to black people but at the time I just thought it was a toy like a puppet or a car or a, you know I didn't think it depicted anybody so I never made the connection um, but yes there was there was a character like that in the Noddy books um, and also she had an awful lot of boys in her books that were the lead characters, the strong characters. I mean, The Secret Seven and Famous Five, it's been a long time since I've read them. And there were girls in it, and they obviously all went on the adventures together, but I do believe the boys had a more prominent role and were the braver ones and what have you, which is obviously not what we want to be teaching young girls that, you know, but having said that I know an awful lot of children now do enjoy the books for what they are um, and a lot of the a lot of the inappropriate terminology was changed over time um, and has been slightly reworded so that they are more appropriate for modern reading um, and to reflect they've removed a lot of the things that people would find offensive um, now and so I 
think that's why they've kind of we can still enjoy them we can still enjoy them for, for the great stories they were right let's crack on with the journey Here we are. I found Blighton Close. Now apparently this is where her house once stood, around here somewhere, before it was demolished. A lovely little pond. Now 
I would be living in there. That is a very little, come round where you might see, cabin. That's where I would live. The streets through here are very wide because back in the day they used to drove cattle through here uh, to market. So a lot of the towns around here have very wide high streets. Nobody gonna let me out? No. Of course not. Right, anyone coming over the hill just gonna have to wait, I'm afraid. Oh, lorry, yeah. Might has right, maybe I should move. <laughs> so there you go. That's part of what I've been up to today. I've got some footage for my van, van tour videos. Anyone fancies coming to the Chalfonts, visiting London, High Wycombe area. Beaconsfield's a good place to stop if you can stealth camp literally on the side of the road in the town centre. Beautiful town centre, really old, mock Tudor buildings. Yeah, very good, very pleased with it. It's been a nice, a nice little stroll around today. What is this homework you speak of? Um, what is this homework you speak of? Tech. Oh, is this design the cool wheelchair? Yeah. Oh, and you're going to use Lego as your medium. Mm -hmm. Excellent. How's your day been? Meh. Meh. 
Did you miss me terribly? No. No? no. Look at your mother and say that to her face. No. <gasps> Kenzie. I missed you. Kenzie. Thanks. Kenzie. I I'm missed you. Work. This is why I grunt. You interrupt me while I try to do my work. Sorry, were you in the zone? I'm trying to work, yeah. No, you're not. You're trying to listen to whatever that is. Pause at the moment. Oh, is it now? Because I won't shh. Okay, I'll shh then. Thank you. I'll zip it. Zip it. Zip it. I'm going to squish your head. I am squishing your head. It, it, it. What you doing? Uh, what you doing? Fortnite. What you doing? Fortnite. Oh, okay. Are you doing a video? Yeah. Do you want to promote your channel? Promote Genesect, your channel. Gen I'll get up on my phone and say. What is it? Genesect Gamer. Genesect got... Gamer. Yeah. I've and what got... do you do on your channel? Gaming. Gaming. Kind of says it in the title. They are have fun, Genesect Gamer. He has sixty six subscribers. Feel free to go and say hello. Yes. Are you doing a live Fortnite, are you? Yeah, I don't have a capture card, so I have to do things live. Okay. Cool. Which is most annoying. Oh. I'm all showered. Leah's home. Uh, Brendan's gone out to meet some friends on the village green. Kenzie's playing Fortnite, as you can see. And in a bit, we will think about dinner. Think about it. Might actually do something about making it. Hello. Are you busy? I am the meat meat scale. Cleaning the griddle. Did you know a company in America made a marrot? A marrot? It's a reverse vegetarian meal. They turned vegetables into meat and they made a meat carrot. A meat carrot. Yeah, but surely you need an animal. Yes. I don't it understand. Was a, it, was a, it, was a, it was beef in the shape of a carrot. So they just shaped beef into a carrot shape? It was a marrot. They just, oh right, okay. It's a meat carrot. It wasn't like it was grown as a living carrot that walked around and was unslaughtered. No, how is that reverse vegetarian? Well, because it was a carrot, but it was a living, breathing, non-vegetable version now with meaty insides and hearts and stuff. Now it was just this, you know, abomination of food, a marrot. A marrot. A glorious abomination. It's half past eight and I haven't finished the vlog. So I'm rectifying that problem and finishing it now. I hope you enjoyed our travels, my blog, no not blog, my travel guide of Beaconsfield will go up on Thursday morning. Some of it is duplicated but not a lot, I've gone into more detail of the area um, on the actual Beaconsfield blog and stuff about park ups and what have you. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in the travel guide that's going up Thursday morning at about 8 o'clock. Anyway, thank you very much for watching you lovely lot and hanging out with me. Back to work tomorrow, but I do intend on taking the little ones for a walk. So uh, tune in again for our stroll. I will see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.